So the difference that we're talking about today is experimental probability. We've been talking about theoretical probability, so I want to just take a second and talk about experimental probability and what that is, okay? Experimental probability means that you have data. That means you have done the experiment, you have flipped the coin, you have pulled the marble, you have spin the spinner, you have actually done something to have data. So just for example, if we were going to do some experimental probability, we would actually roll this uh, number cube you know, however many times. So we could make a table and we could just make some tallies here and we could then roll this number cube. So the first time it landed on six, let's say we're gonna roll it 10 times, okay? And then the second time it landed on three, the third time it landed on two, the fourth time it landed on five, one, two, another two, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so we need three more rolls. Another one, two more rolls, a five, and a three. Okay, so let's use this data that we just took. Now, mind you, we're not using the experiment, the theoretical data. Theoretical, you know, for a number cube would be one out of six. That would be, you know, your probability of rolling each of these numbers. So let's say we're going to actually use this data to create our probabilities. That is the main difference between experimental and theoretical probability. So with experimental, you actually do the experiment, you get your data, and then you use that data as you create your probability. So if we wanted the probability, um, the experimental probability of drawing, or I'm sorry, rolling a two, okay, based on this data, we rolled a two three times, out of the 10 times that we rolled. So based on this data, it would be three out of 10, okay? Notice that does not match what the theoretical probability would be. However, that is what our data, you know, would show. So again, in the same aspect, using our experimental probability, and let's say we wanted the experimental probability of rolling a four. So using the experimental probability, if we look at our data, for rolling a four, experimentally, did we roll a four? We did not, we did not roll a four. So this, the experimental probability of rolling a four would be zero. There's, there, we, there, we didn't roll a four. So the main difference with experimental probability is that you are actually using the data to calculate your probabilities. You're not talking about what should happen. Remember now we're talking about what actually did happen. You did the experiment, you made your tally marks, you actually performed the task, and now you're using those numbers and that data to um, find your probability. So let's look at this, um, what that they have over here. It says the number cube was rolled 90 times. The results are shown in the table. So just a hint, any time that you see um, something about results being shown, you probably can tell that that's gonna be experimental. Um, when they're giving you results, when they're giving you numbers that have already, you know, been done or an experiment that's already been done, that's probably going to be um, experimental. And I guarantee you that theoretical answer will be there, so you have to be really careful. So let's say that we want to find, using this data, the probability of um, rolling a six. Probability of rolling a six. So based on the data, the probability of rolling a six would be 13 times, and it told us that it was rolled 90 times. So that would be our probability, 13 out of 90. That would be our probability for rolling a six. In the same way, we could find the probability, the experimental probability of rolling a one, and the number one was rolled, and frequency just means how many times it happened, okay? So the number one, was rolled 18 times out of 90. So in that case, we could actually simplify. I believe we can divide both of those by nine. So we would get 18 divided by nine is two, and 90 divided by nine is 10. We can go one more here, we can divide by two again. So that would be one fifth, okay? Um, so the probability of that happening 
okay, is one in five, one in five chances. Again, if you think about the theoretical probability for rolling a number cube, one in five is not theoretical. So we're going to put this is not the theoretical probability, okay? We're not talking about what should happen. This is what actually did happen. So again, the biggest thing that you have to remember is just use your data. So I'm going to write that really big. That's kind of your takeaway. Use your data, okay? Use the data that you are given. So if you do that, that should help you to find the experimental probability.